I think it's safe to say that Dragon Ball Super has one of the most confusing and hotly debated power scales in all of shonen anime and manga. But can you believe that at one point it was all so simple? When Dragon Ball returned with Battle of Gods 10 years ago, Toriyama gave us a simple numerical power scale for the new godly tier of power, Super Saiyan God Goku as a 6, Beerus as a 10 and Whis as a 15. With this being backed up in the movie itself, with Beerus needing to use 70% of his power to defeat Goku and Whis being able to one shot Beerus. But what if we kept things this simple? What if we only listened to Toriyama? What if we made a power scale based on his vision and no one else's? Well this begs the question, how the hell would we even do that and what the hell would it even look like? It's actually quite simple, you see ladies and gentlemen, Okay, just gentlemen, let's be honest. I've cracked the code to the canon Dragon Ball Super Power Scale tier list. Now, in order for me to accomplish such a feat, the requirements to get onto this list were very strict, as I'm only acknowledging feats and statements from the four films made since Dragon Ball's revival in 2013, aka the movie continuity of Dragon Ball Super. This is because they're written by Toriyama himself, with minimal interference or interjection from other parties. I'm also including interviews where we're given insight on Toriyama's original drafts for the arc of Dragon Ball Super anime and manga and interviews where he directly compares one character's strength to another, although I may refer to the anime and manga where they converge in such a way that I feel corroborates Toriyama's original vision for the power level of Dragon Ball Super characters. And so, with such consideration, the following characters that have been cut include, but are not limited to, Super Saiyan Blue Afford Vegeta, Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku, um, Gas, Moro, Granola, Super Saiyan Rage Trunks, Black Freezer, Ultra Ego Vegeta, and Ultra Instinct Goku. Wait, no, 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 not you. This you stay. I know some of you Dragon Ball Super manga fans may be annoyed at me, but with the way the Super manga's going with the superhero adaptation, it looks like it's adapting more of Toriyama's power scale, so the power scale I'm going to provide you in this video may be relevant to the manga sooner than you think, and with you Dragon Ball Super anime power scalers, there was no hope ever since Goku whipped out that Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken, the power scale was destroyed from there and now I'm hearing stuff about anime Tournament of Power Roshi being able to give Super Vegito Boo Saga Super Saiyan Vegito the hands. Nah, I'm not touching that, like I, I may record these videos in front of a cheap ass green screen but even I have standards here. Alright, so let's continue with the canon Dragon Ball Super Power Scale tier list. This is going to go from S plus tier all the way down to C tier. So let's not start with C tier, let's not spoil who's down there, instead let's set a baseline B tier with Super Saiyan Blue, Goku and Vegeta. I should add that for the sake of simplicity, we're not going to bother speculating how much stronger their blue forms got within Super. Like that time they went into the hyperbolic time chamber, came out with those messy bids and were in dire need of this video sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped is a global men's lifestyle brand that is revolutionizing the world of men's grooming one pair of balls at a time. Their latest grooming and hygiene bundle, the Perfect Package 5.0 Ultra, features their all new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra Electric Trimmer. This beauty boasts next gen dual skin safe blade heads, accompanied by a trimmer blade that cuts through hair with ease all while still being gentle on skin. Its LED light introduces a dual temperature feature meaning anyone of any skin tone can easily locate any easy to miss hair all powered by a rechargeable lithium ion battery. Now to preserve your pristine privates, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant will keep you smelling fresh down there while the Crop Soother pampers and moisturizes your delicate areas. And when you purchase the Perfect Package 5.0 Ultra you'll receive the Manscaped Shed 2.0 travel bag for your on-the-go grooming storage. So head over to manscaped.com to get your hands on the Perfect Package 5.0 Ultra and Lawn Mower 
5.0 Ultra today. Use my promo code CAGE for 20% off free international shipping and a free gift. That's promo code CAGE, C-A-G-E. Click the link on the pinned comment and in the description. Thank you Manscaped for sponsoring this video and your bulls will thank you. As many statements regarding character strength are going to hinge on the full-blooded Saiyan duo. And you know, this video is going to be controversial, so let's just lean into that. Joining Goku and Vegeta in blue tier are the android duo Gamma 1 and Gamma 2. As Piccolo stated, they're about on par with Goku and Vegeta. And Piccolo sends Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Vegeta in the Dragon Ball Super Broly film, so he knows just how strong they are. Furthermore, the Gammas don't just parallel Goku and Vegeta in power level, but also in personality, with the more laid-back Gamma 2 reflecting Goku and the more serious Gamma 1 reflecting Vegeta. Not to mention that Goku's parallel Gamma 2 sacrifices himself during the battle against Cell just as Goku did it during the Cell games, with Cell Max even resembling semi-perfect Cell. Hell, the Piccolo vs Goku rivalry can even be seen as a flipped version of Goku and Piccolo's old rivalry, as this time Piccolo is fighting a Goku that was made to destroy him, rather than Goku fighting a Piccolo that was made to destroy him. Rounding out B tier is Golden Freezer, who managed to fight on par with Blue Goku for a while and fared just as well against his legendary Super Saiyan Broly than Goku and Vegeta did. That being that he got the shit beating out of him but didn't die. Moving on to A tier, we have characters that could defeat Goku and Vegeta individually but would lose if they teamed up against them. I'm gonna start with an odd pick Fused Zamasu. This may confuse you as in the anime and manga, he pushed Goku and Vegeta to fuse as two Super Saiyan Blues weren't enough to stop him. However, in Toriyama's original draft, there was no Vegito Blue, as he only intended Fuse Zamasu to be strong enough so two Super Saiyan Blues would be enough to overpower him and outright defeat him if it wasn't for his immortality. Joining him in A tier is Dragon Ball Super Superhero Ultimate Gohan, as he was able to get the upper hand on Gamma 1. The only reason he didn't outright defeat the android was because of his enhanced android stamina. Alright, meeting the two half Saiyans in A tier is gonna be Beerus and the other gods of destruction. Look, I know Beerus's power level has been inflated to hell and back in the manga since their respective Battle of Gods arcs, but if you stick to Toriyama's statements regarding Beerus's strength, it really hasn't. His power level hasn't been inflated like that. Like, let's take Resurrection F, wherein we stated that if Goku and Vegeta fought together as a team, they could defeat Beerus. I know some of you may have a problem with me using this quote, but it's actually going to be very relevant when we explore the S tier of the list, so stick around for that. As for Beerus' power level compared to the other gods, while it's been speculated by fans that Beerus is the strongest one by far, this just isn't true nor is it stated anywhere. In the Dragon Ball Super anime and manga, there are statements of other gods beating him in an arm wrestling match. Although it's not a fight as stated by Beerus, it's clearly there to tell the audience that the other gods are in the same realm of power to him. Also in Superhero, when Goku is listing people himself and Goku are yet to surpass, the gods of destruction are visualized as a set tier of power. The idea that there are these massive power gaps between them just isn't hinted anywhere by Toriyama. See, what I find really, really dumb about Beerus fanboys is that they will take this one page from the Dragon Ball Super manga and then say, oh, Beerus, Beerus solos, you have a ghost of destruction. Like, I know Dragon Ball fans don't read, but the pages are right there. If you continue the fight, you'll see that Beerus took damage in Belmont. He was about as damaged as Quitella, his, his uh, supposed equal. Um, he got trapped in Belma's bubble attack and he got paralyzed by Rumshi's roar. That whole Ultra Instinct thing was just foreshadowing to show how useful Ultra Instinct is in a fight. Beerus is not all that according to Kira Toriyama, that much is painfully obvious. 
therefore he goes in A tier. But he doesn't even take the top spot of A tier, that one's gonna go to Universe 11's Pride Trooper Jiren the Grey. Okay, Jiren is a weird, complicated case, but I think I figured out Toriyama's true intention regarding his power level relative to the rest of the cast, as in Superhero, it is revealed that his raw power is only high B tier or low A tier, just above Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Vegeta, but not by much. Now, if you remember the Dragon Ball Super anime or manga versions of the Tournament of Power, you're probably quite confused as Jiren was portrayed as the embodiment of absolute strength beyond that of even a god of destruction, but this is just another case of Toei inflating the strength of an antagonist to make the story more exciting and in order to justify Goku getting a power up which wasn't in Toriyama's original draft for the tournament. See what actually makes Jiren so formidable to Toriyama is his martial arts skill as he fights to the point of such efficiency and key control that he effectively punches above his weights, kinda making all of his attacks like critical hits from an RPG. If you take a closer look at the statements surrounding Jiren's strength in Dragon Ball Super Superhero, you'll notice that his fighting style being one of absolute calm and relaxation until striking with maximum force instinctively links back to Whis's description of the perfect fighting style in Resurrection F, a fighting style that Whis described would give blue level fighters the ability to overcome and avoid any threats, a fighting style that not even a god of destruction like Beerus had mastered, yet Jiren has a firm grip on a very similar style of fighting if not an outright mastery of it, thus making him the most skilled martial artist in all the Dragon Ball multiverse thus far, bar the angels of course, and a more formidable opponent than the gods of destruction. How can I prove this? Well, from what we've gathered from Dragon Ball Super Superhero and Toriyama's original draft for the Tournament of Power, it took some combination of Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Vegeta, Golden Frieza and Android 17 to eventually wear down and defeat Jiren with teamwork. That's at least 3 B tier fighters. Meanwhile, we stated in Resurrection F that the combined efforts of just Super Saiyan Blue, Goku and Vegeta would be enough to match and possibly defeat Beerus. I guess the ultimate fighting style doesn't stop you from getting jumped. And because of that, I think that Jiren would defeat any god of destruction in a one on one fight. Honestly, the only reason I don't put Jiren in S tier is because we don't know enough about Toriyama's original draft for the Tournament of Power. All we do know is that he intended Jiren to be defeated by teamwork without Goku getting a transformation or Ultra Instinct Goku being necessary, as that wasn't part of Toriyama's original draft for the tournament, and the events of Ultra Instinct Goku aren't referred to in Superhero or the Broly film, and thus I put Jiren at the very top of A tier. Oh yeah, I should add that in Toriyama's draft for the Tournament of Power, Toppo was always intended to be God of Destruction candidate level, and was likely written to be defeated by Vegeta in a hard fought battle as portrayed in the anime and manga, therefore he goes in B tier. So now we enter the big leagues of S tier. I'm defining this as characters that would defeat Goku and Vegeta even if they did fight together as a team, and I'm starting this off with a character who did just that, Dragon Ball Super Broly, who spent a good part of his debut film living up to the legacy of his Dragon Ball Z counterpart, as he just whooped Goku and Vegeta throughout the, <laughs> throughout the damn film. Even at the end of the film, Goku says that Broly's power is a level above Beerus's, and I know there's another line that Beerus fanboys love to ignore, but if you take it and take if you take that statement and take Whis's statement from Resurrection F, it makes perfect sense. As with the two of these, you have Broly over Goku and Vegeta fighting as a team over Beerus as Toriyama's intended power scale regarding the purple cat. As for Ikari or Rage Broly, that form goes in B tier, as he quite literally ragdolled Super Saiyan God Goku and put up a decent fight against Blue Goku who still had an edge on him. 
going back to S tier, joining Broly, there is another recreation of an iconic Dragon Ball Z villain, the Crimson Kaiju, Cell Max. As it was stated by Gohan that even Goku and Vegeta's assistance wouldn't have made much of a difference against him. Also, as stated by Toriyama, the only reason why he isn't above Broly in S tier is due to his incomplete mind. If he had the wit of Uzaru Vegeta as opposed to that of Uzaru Gohan, he would have been able to utilize his god tier power better. An interesting note about Gohan's statement is that it may put Cell Max at a tier above Jiren, as he states that if Goku and Vegeta were there to help out, it may not have made all that difference against Cell Max. Which is interesting, because if Goku and Vegeta were there, it kind of would have been this reunion of the Universe 7 Tournament of Power team, perhaps even stronger, and yet they still wouldn't have been able to defeat Cell Max. This is the exact opposite of how Toriyama intended Jiren to be defeated by teamwork. So in the bottom of S tier, we have Orange Piccolo, who in the first 10 seconds of the transformation's existence justifies his position in S tier, as he tanked all those punches from Gamma 2 and then just one shot him. It's safe to say that a fight between Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Vegeta and Orange Piccolo would end in a one-sided stomp. On the note of comparing Piccolo's power to Goku, there's a quote from Toriyama I want to address that I think people are misinterpreting. You see, around the release of Superhero, Toriyama spoke on Orange Piccolo's design as well as his power wherein he stated, he's finally obtained battle power on par with Goku and Co slash battle power that rivals that of Goku and the others. And people have taken this to mean that Toriyama is making a direct comparison between Goku and Piccolo, maybe referring to Ultra Instinct Goku, but I don't think so, as people are ignoring the and co slash and the others part of the quote, likely in reference to other characters who are also in the godly tier of power, such as Vegeta, Gohan, Beerus, Jiren, Broly, Frieza, etc. Toriyama is making a more general statement when talking about Orange Piccolo's power. He's saying that he's happy Piccolo is relevant again power level wise after being relegated to volleyball partner in the Buu saga, getting taken out by chopsticks in Battle of Gods, getting pressured by a Zarbon level fighter in Resurrection F, jobbing pointlessly in the Universe 6 tournament to make Goku and Vegeta look better, etc quite the fall from grace for the first Z Fighter to surpass the Super Saiyan level. Although I can't help but find Toriyama's wording quite funny. Like my brother in Kami, you could have made Piccolo relevant anytime you felt like it. However, Orange Piccolo is at the bottom of S tier. With the way Cell Max was giving him those hands, goddamn. But to be fair to Piccolo, he was in need of a Senzu Bean and would have used it if Gohan didn't drop his like an idiot. And it's implied that he tactically jobbed against Cell Max so Gohan could be motivated to transform. But on the note of Gohan, it's time we head into S plus tier, which are characters that would soundly defeat. S tier characters, and so logically, we're gonna start this list with Goat Jita Blue. Like we all saw the way he used his mere minutes of existence to style all over Broly, the strongest character in S tier. So it's safe to say that Cell Max and Orange Piccolo would get the same treatment. Look at that devious smile Whis had on his face when Gogeta was firing that Kamehameha. Whis has never been that interested in a person's power, and Whis is a Z tier character. Bro has the best fight scene in Dragon Ball history and is the strongest Dragon Ball character bar the angel, Zeno, etc. And oh, oh yeah, we have um, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, oh no, I mean uh, Gohan Blanco, oh, oh I mean no, sorry, uh, we have Beast Gohan also in S plus tier. A transformation as powerful as it is creatively bankrupt. Anyway, putting my bias aside, Toriyama straight up calls him the strongest and we all saw the way he tanked that punch from Cell Max and almost one-shot him. 
but I do have him weaker than Gogeta Blue only because while he did stomp Cell, he was weakened by Gamma 2's attack and Orange Piccolo held him in place so Gohan could hit his weak spot. Meanwhile, Gogeta Blue took on a fully powered Broly, who's stronger than Cell, in a one-on-one -on -one fight and bodied him with ease, plain and simple. As I simply refuse to have Beast Gohan be the last character I talk about in this list, so let's round things out with a C tier. This is where we'll put Super Saiyan Gohan and Ultimate Piccolo from Superhero as they put up a respectable fight against the Gammas but were still noticeably outclassed by them. With them are another duo of Goku and Vegeta in their Super Saiyan God forms slash Saiyan Beyond God forms before that got retconned. Either way, judging by what we've seen in Dragon Ball Super Broly, the power gap between Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan Blue is considerable but not crazy huge. A tier of difference seems appropriate. And rounding out C tier is base slash final form Freezer, who put up a semi-decent fight against Saiyan Beyond God Goku in Resurrection F. And there you have it, an Akira Toriyama approved Dragon Ball Super Power Scale tier list or the closest we're ever going to get to one at this rate. I know many of you are going to have some extreme opinions on this, tier list, on this tier list, so let me have it in the comments below. As for why I even made this video, well I wouldn't resort to speculative fan tier lists if Dragon Ball Super wasn't so dry with content right now. <laughs> to know just how much us Dragon Ball fans are suffering with no new content, check out my video here about the dark age, the drought of Dragon Ball Super. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed and stay locked into the cage. Peace out.